The 12th Level Intellects podcast is hosted by the Watchtower Database. Visit WatchtowerDatabase.com for more podcast episodes, videos, comics, artwork, and pretty much anything DC Animated Universe you can think of. Only a 12th level intellect has the slightest hope of surviving what you are about to experience. Decat the room. Okay. You've got, you got one on your shirt. I do have a cat on my shirt. Everyone, can, everyone that's listening can see that it's a cat. I was, so uh, would you call that? It's not. It's not Catman. It's Bat Cat. Bat Cat is what most people have been calling it. Yeah. Bat it's cat, a yeah. funny cat wearing a funny Batman costume. Uh, so the, so uh, it's Bat Cat. The shirt that I wear a lot in um, Will It Can and another couple other videos that has a bunch of new Batman Adventures characters mm-hmm. miscolored on it. Um, I, every time that I wear that, at least one person comments, uh, "Like, where'd you get that shirt?" Oh my god, I love that shirt. And I always have to say, like, hot topic several years ago. Like, it, I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. That's where and then it came that, from. Yeah, and then that Mask of the Phantasm uh, uh, video that I shared on the channel. That mm-hmm. was like a sci-fi video about the movie. And there was some part where she's talking about, like, my, oh, when I met Paul Dini, I got to tell him about how his movie shaped my childhood and blah, blah, blah. And it was really cool. And I got to do it while wearing a Batman the Animated Series t-shirt. And it's the same t-shirt. And she, like, zooms in on it. And nice. I was, yeah, well, <laughs> there's a lot of mistakes on that shirt. So <laughs> you maybe don't be too proud of that. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but they're, they're kind of fun mistakes in yeah. a way. Has I've there been ever think- been a bat cat? in i don't know why are you asking me you would know the answer yeah i should know i don't think there is <laughs> no wait no that's not true damien uh batman's son damien had a cat yeah, that, that he named okay. alfred oh that's right yeah, yeah a cat I, named alfred. I knew that he had a, that's the only was a cow, cow i thought was yeah like, it was yeah. called bat cow uh, yeah. well anyway welcome back everybody to another 12th <laughs> level intellects episode yep. uh i'm james that's ted and there's hey. also John in the background. He's leaving the yeah. room, though. <laughs> Bye, John. John. John's going to join us later to talk yes. Game of Thrones. Yes, which I guess is our main topic today, because I feel yeah. like we should uh, we should save the new Batman. We were going to do new Batman adventures, um, kind of like episodic review, quick quickie reviews of each episode. We did that for Batman Animated Series uh, when it came out on Blu-ray, but we never got to new Batman adventures. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, but I think we'll Maddie do it deserves soon. to be on that since there's critters yeah. in that. <laughs> so, right. <laughs> if they'll for any other about, reason. About yeah. critters. Yeah. yeah. Uh, cool. But yeah, we're going to talk about the game, first Game of Thrones episode. I don't think we of were ever. Eight. Yeah, I don't mm-hmm. think we the show was on when we were when we started the podcast or it was like the tail end of that season. Yeah. Or something like that. And of course, it didn't come to mind to be a subject matter for this. So. Um, but now it's I mean, a it pretty deal, much, though. yeah, I there's well, probably a lot of overlap. Yeah. I hope, I hope there is. Yeah. I mean, the, this, the podcast is kind of our excuse to talk about whatever, <laughs> like, this I mean, it, it stays within nerdy realms, realms. Yeah. It's it is It'll seven realms. Yeah. Sure. So, uh, <laughs> I, I have a lot of, um, swamp thing stuff to talk about. So I if you too. wanted to, okay, well, <laughs> let's skip that i have other second. things okay. <laughs> yeah the, okay so there was an end game uh tv spot that i thought was really beautiful it recapped all of the um previous movies or at least most of them i i feel like a couple were missing but they were just showing it. i don't know which ones were missing <laughs> but well, it showed like uh just little blips of each movie that le- with the title of that movie and it led mm. up to end game and then it showed um I don't know. It, they they're barely giving anything away, which I like yeah. because I can actually watch the trailers and get hyped for it and not feel like I'm having things ruined for me or anything. Um yeah, I don't yeah, know. Absolutely. That's all I really have to say about it. <laughs> That's cool. Um I I I noticed something in the very first in-game trailer where you see Hawkeye um in the Avengers and he's like firing Hawk, his Hawk guy, like Hawkman, yeah. Hawkgirl. Yeah. yeah. Hawk okay. guy. Hawk right. guy. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> he um so he's shooting the bow and uh-huh. there's like a young woman standing there with him. Um and they're like shooting yeah. some bullseye. And so just recently Disney Plus, Marvel TV, whoever announced that they're doing a Hawkeye TV show for oh, that streaming okay. platform. And it's gonna be primarily featured around Hawkeye 
training Kate Bishop, who becomes the new Hawkeye in the Marvel. Hmm. Okay. Universe. She was part of the Young Avengers. She so was... maybe she'll be introduced in this movie or something. Yeah, or, yeah. Uh... Introduced in, in Endgame, and then the Hawkeye show finishes that. Well, that's kind of nice to hear that they're actually going to have <laughs> the movies and shows Come, like i mean yeah. agents of shield has always done that i guess but well, yeah, this is now like disney doing it's on like, purpose yeah it's not episodic yeah. content yeah. yeah but kate bishop is a super cool character there was um a hawkeye book written a couple years ago by matt fraction mm-hmm. and uh david aha who did the art and it's such a cool book um definitely worth a read maybe yeah. i'll to a graphic content on it one day you should because i have no idea anything yeah. about it and usually <laughs> i've enjoyed editing those because i go oh that's cool i want to read that now nice. <laughs> <laughs> that's good there's yeah. um so there was one issue of this hawkeye run that was entirely done in sign language so instead of word oh, captions and huh. everything was all like finger <laughs> gestures and movements and that's stuff that's got to be and, hard to do in a comic like yeah, per it, panel or whatever it was it was pretty amazing um so <laughs> Okay. Yeah. So that's, that's my. They're making a Hawkeye show, and I think Kate Bishop will be in the movie. That's yeah. my. That's my I news. keep sound. I keep thinking you're saying Kid Bishop. That's like, not. What oh, I'm it's saying. not Bishop from the X Men. It's Kid Bishop, like Slobo or something. We're like <laughs> Kid Amazo. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good that's a one. Thing. Um, <laughs> all right, Kid there was Devil. a there was a Dark Phoenix final trailer. If you care at all, um, I care. I care a little bit. <laughs> I care about I Sophie Turner. Right, I yeah, okay, that's, uh, I'll go, Yeah, that's a good reason to see it. Um, but the when uh, it's basically the same kind of stuff as any other trailer for this movie. It's just a bunch of shots of Jean Grey looking angry, and then things. That's exploding. my favorite part of uh, Sansa Stark. <laughs> suppose, so it's yeah. like I'm here. I'm here for the same reasons. She'll yeah. She'll be well. <laughs> she'll <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I was gonna make a <laughs> Peter Baelish joke, but uh, it's. No, it's gone. It's done. Some, there's some um, little fingers there. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I guess. There's a, there's a couple lines I picked up. I just watched it like two minutes before we started this because I was just waiting on you and I was, oh, I'll watch it. Why not? And it was, there were two lines that I picked out that um, I want to talk about real quick. <laughs> One is uh, the, the overall, the trailer and this last couple of X Men movies have just been very like. I don't know, moody, yeah. emo X Men. Like I never finished Apocalypse. Yeah, <laughs> I tr- I tried to watch on an airplane. Right, I, tell I, you I did finish my Apocalypse, feelings on the movie, but barely. Yeah, it was. Um, <laughs> I, I I can't ever really start a movie and not finish it. I don't know, but the uh, I'm just a better person than you. I guess is what I'm saying. Sometimes I fall but... asleep. <laughs> <laughs> so, sometimes in life i just fall asleep i don't know but I, sometimes so there's a line, watching a movie so there's a line where she says when i lose control bad things happen but it feels good and i just oh that i was just thinking about how how over like stupidly dramatic these are and it just emphasized it really badly and then yeah. there's also a part where she's talking with uh uh oh what's her name Storm. No, it's it's an actress that usually has red hair, but she has white hair in this movie. Jessica Ooh. Chastain, I think. Um, okay. And oh she, yeah, uh, she's playing the queen, uh, the the like alien space queen. Yeah, yeah. Or some. It's mysterious in the trailers, but I think that's that's mm-hmm. been said or she, something. Yeah. She. I've only read a little bit of X Men, the Grant Morrison yeah. run, and she's a big part of that run. She like okay. she and Professor X have this whole history. So she's Jessica come back Chastain. to Earth. <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> but so uh, she's she's there for some professor x you know yeah for some professor sex yeah man but she <laughs> she's sitting next to john in the background is, is this what your podcast is about <laughs> this, this is all you guys do but uh <laughs> so she's sitting she's sitting next to gene gray and she's like the x-men fear you and then Jean, or and she says and what they fear and gene gray says they seek to destroy and mm. I was thinking, like, is that really the X Men's mo? Like, oh, we're afraid of this, so we're gonna blow it up. I don't really think that's what no, they that's do. What, that's what people think. That's what people X Men yeah, about the X Men. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so <laughs> maybe she's so. being manipulative, you know. But wow. it does start out with uh, Professor X saying, like, uh, "Oh, a t- a NASA, don't worry, NASA, we're coming to help you." So it's like there's a that's why they're in space. Is there's some sort of shuttle that got all messed up and 
I wonder if it'll be like a reference to a real space mm. launch or something because it's a, it's a it's a period piece still, right? This is what is right. This? Yeah, we're in the nineties now. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, it jumps ten years every movie, but half it the does. actors look exactly the same. Yeah. Yep. Well, Mystique can change shape. So, you know, sure. That's what <laughs> Well, to well, stay on like kind of a Game of Thrones kick, yeah. um, want to talk about Ian Glenn who plays yes. uh, Jorah. Yeah, mm-hmm. he was cast as Batman or Bruce Wayne anyway. Yeah, <laughs> maybe more not specifically Batman. Bruce Wayne. Yeah, yeah, more specifically he's Bruce Wayne <laughs> in the the Titans live action uh-huh. show. So that would be cool. Two. I think yeah. I think that's great casting. He's definitely an older choice of the character, and everything I've seen in like the casting announcements said that it was more of like a Dark Knight Returns. Yeah, take. well, he but, when they when they showed the. When I first saw it, I just saw the name, and then the yeah. picture they used was a Bat- uh, Bruce Wayne panel from some from I think the current DC Rebirth uh, Batman Beyond comic. Oh, uh, okay. And I was like, why did they use a Batman Beyond? Bruce I think Wayne? I saw that article and I realized, too. Oh, yeah. okay, yeah. And then when I realized who it was, I was like, oh, that's awesome. But I, it'll mm-hmm. be it's it's kind of like a James Bond thing to me where it's like Daniel Craig has blonde hair. He can't be James Bond. Like it's the same sort of. Does it yeah. really matter? I don't know. <laughs> no, no, it doesn't really matter. He, um, I don't know. I've always thought John Hamm would be a great. Yeah, well, for, for the movies. I still, for the movies. <laughs> yeah, for the movies. Sure. Well, we're still holding out for Bat Ham. I think I just, uh, Ian Glenn, he was also in the Resident Evil movies as like mm-hmm. the um, Umbrella Corporation, uh, like head honcho dude. I can't remember yeah. what his name is in the movies, but oh, um, yeah. but yeah, he, I, which I rewatched after watching game of thrones and i had already seen most of those movies before that and never mm-hmm. obviously recognized him as anything other than there's a guy there <laughs> but so it's right. more i don't know more enjoyable knowing these when people yeah. pop up like that but yeah i um, guess it'll be a good he's, he could play so. a good playboy kind of guy yeah i i can i can see it um we did see the like glimpse of batman in the final episode yeah. of the titans but that was like a dream sequence yeah and i mean yeah he's he's definitely you definitely see enough of him to see like his you know chin mm-hmm. face part but, <laughs> but we know he's like still very active too because he's training jason todd right yeah. now as robin so that's yeah he's i hope this not is like... actual bruce wayne batman that we see and not yeah another random sure unimportant yeah. thing or like a shapeshifter or something <laughs> yeah <laughs> It'll oh, well. be uh, it'll be Dick Grayson watching Game of Thrones, and then he'll have a dream that Jorah Mormont is and his. This is dad. supposed to be a season that has like a big focus on Deathstroke and Ravager, and it's going to introduce, well, uh, maybe not introduce, because Connor Kent Superboy was at the very like, oh, yeah. tail end, like the after credit scene, but he's gonna oh, be... I didn't even watch for that. Yeah, I didn't either. I didn't <laughs> even know there was an after credit scene until I read about it later, and then I was like, oh yeah, there's a whole like Superboy and Crypto little oh. bit. Yeah, okay, <laughs> but it's Connor, this Connor the, this like Titans Doom Patrol, if they're connected, universe is very there's, like just everything exists. To be. But you don't know anything about any what what exists until you just <laughs> it's see it. A little out of order, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's okay. Um, Warner Brothers is doing going to do a their own streaming service apparently. Um, In the, okay. Like separate from DC Universe. But AT and T um, is doing their own streaming okay. service. Well, maybe Does that it's have anything the same to do with thing? That? I don't know. I would hope so. I mean, they they are owned by the same. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I didn't read that far into it. I just saw that it'll launch <laughs> in the fall, and there's question whether DC Universe will be like folded into it, okay. but that would kind of negate like the comics aspect of DC Universe. Yeah. Like it's it's uh, which I the think extra is content kind of expanding. Stuff. I, I think I think DC Universe is like greatly expanding their comics library mm-hmm. now. Like so, the membership includes almost everything ever. Well, I keep seeing like ads that say. Yeah. Cool, we got more stuff now, even more stuff. And I keep thinking, is that because people are signing up? Like, that's what I originally thought, but maybe it's they're just trying to get more people to sign up. Wait, no, no, there's more stuff. It it's be. fine. So <laughs> I was going to say, for Swamp Thing News, obviously yeah. we saw the teaser on Twitter. Yeah, he looks really good. He looks very he looks Swamp really Thing-ish. Cool. <laughs> he, he looks a lot like the West Craven He looks movie, really good. I'm going on. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, was, it's, it's getting late over here. <laughs> but 
Um, I was gonna say that production shut off early. That's what I read yeah. today. Did you you saw that too? Well, the I mean, I was surprised. I guess whenever they announced when it was gonna air, because there's been nothing. It's just been like Swamp Thing ex- is gonna exist at some point. Oh, by the way, well, it's a I've month been, from now. <laughs> I've been reading a lot of news about it because it's filming in North Carolina. And yeah, I live in North Carolina, so it's on it's on the coast, which is like a good five hours away from me. Mm-hmm. But they've been filming in Wilmington, and I read on like a local like Wilmington news website that they shut production down on episode ten. Which oh yeah, is... yeah, yeah. No, I was yeah, I was gonna. I th- okay, I was gonna mention yeah. how yeah, it was it was gonna be thirteen episodes, but then right. it, now it's only ten because of creative differences or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like the whole crew, like they were they they are shooting right now. They were just yeah. on set like even two weeks ago, you know. So oh, it's, okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, still like that's huh. kind of a our so recent yeah. Thing. So they'll have to either either episode ten is an okay wrap up cliffhanger thing, or they'll have to like re edit what they have into yeah. less episodes or something. Huh. We'll see. It's okay. um. I mean, I could see it being a really unsatisfying cliffhanger because that's the way Titans ended. Yeah, like it was a horrible last episode. I yeah. mean, it had it had its <laughs> moments, but. Nothing felt. Yeah, it might as well not have existed because it just left us in the same place that we left the previous episode. (laughs) Yeah, it was weird. That was Um, the whole season, though. (laughs) The whole show was just. Yeah, and I liked parts of it, but it was it just did not feel like I'd I'd like a season to feel cohesive at least. Sure. (laughs) And that did not feel (laughs) cohesive at all. Well, uh, I I kind of wrote down just a bunch of stuff about the show because i hadn't looked into really anything about it i just knew it was going to happen um mm-hmm. and so maybe for people anyone that's listening that also might just know a swamp thing show is going to happen but not really know anything about it right <laughs> um and we've talked about how uh what's his face saw guy um he also directed aquaman <laughs> james wan oh, james is wan. gonna mm-hmm. is like the showrunner or he's not the showrunner but he's like the like producer, a producer or whatever. Um, but the showrunners are uh, Mark Verheiden, who I don't know, but apparently he worked on Battlestar Galactica, and Gary Dalberman, who worked on the It movie, the okay. recent remake. Cool. Um, then also the pilot is being directed by Len Wiseman, who directed Underworld, um, and okay. he's done a bunch of special effects stuff on other so movies. Where did um, the creative differences come from? I, d- I which... don't know. <laughs> probably swamp thing i don't know yeah, himself yeah <laughs> yeah uh i was just gonna say len wiseman not to be confused with swamp thing right. creator len wine yeah. or ween or whatever <laughs> like it's basically the same name mm-hmm. uh the guy playing swamp thing his name is uh the, the monster version like the actual swamp thing sure. his name is Derek mears um i knew i recognized him uh, so I looked him up and he's basically he's just he does a bunch of this kind of stuff where he's just a guy in a monster suit. Um, cool. He was the he was the predator in Predators. He was Krampus in Grimm. Wow. Uh, he was Jason Voorhees in the Friday the 13th 09 remake. Um, <laughs> just a bunch of stuff <laughs> like that where you don't really see him. You just, just see just like kind of a tall guy who can wear a mask. Yeah, and it, it felt sure. similar to uh, leave cat leave the room. Um, it felt similar to the guy that played the um, like fish man in um, mm-hmm. uh, uh, Shape of Water. Yeah, is he was also in like Hellboy as a similar right. just weird fish man, and like he just does He's, that same kind of stuff. Yeah, and so many. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, the guy playing. Movies. Alec Holland, his name is Andy Bean. I didn't recognize him in anything, but he was he's apparently playing the adult, one of the adult kids in the it sequel. Okay. Um and cool. then the only other thing was was inter- Jason Woodrew is being played by Kevin Durand who played the Blob in X-Men Origins Wolverine. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so that was wow. it. Wow. That was something. Uh, Too bad they couldn't get John Glover back. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So anyway, yeah, that would that would have been pretty funny actually. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that would have been great. We'll tie into Batman and Robin there. Yeah, that's all I <laughs> have for news. Is that's so. all I have too. 
Well, cool. We're gonna we're gonna do a weird little transition, you know, like we always we're gonna, do. Well, we're gonna talk Game of Thrones here in a yeah. second with um, our guest John Morris, who's a friend of mine. We're working on a comic book together. He has read all the Game of Thrones books, oh, so that okay. is helpful. He's read all the books, so he can tell Ultra, us about that. Yeah. Ultra nerd. Yeah. <laughs> yep. yep. That's a okay. good way to describe him. <laughs> I, okay, yeah. so here's but the... We're doing, but we're not doing that right this second in well, real I just, time. I already... <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah. I'll need, I'll need your headphones out. <laughs> I was late to the party there. So we're talking about Game of Thrones Season 8 premiere. Yes. Oh. oh yeah. I accidentally kicked the mic with my That foot. probably made sounds. Live action. This is do real. It, this yeah, is live. do it again. This is real. <laughs> ah! So I'm sorry. Actually, I accidentally did it again, but I tried to fake do it again. again. Just like Game of Thrones, they always try to fake do it, but they always they actually are, yeah, do it. Yeah, they you know? they and they a little and sometimes they try to not actually. Yeah, that's do a it, great and segue. Fake, and then they do it by. <laughs> that's why I'm here for. I try. <laughs> Introduce, you know, introduce. Those? Oh yeah, this is John Morris. Hi, Hi everyone, I'm John Morris. He's my, Hi. He's my friend. We're working on a comic book project together. I'm John Duper Morris. I have <laughs> a degree in 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 uh, talking. Oh. Nice. That's not true, actually. I don't have a degree in talking. I've never taken a talk. Do you have class. a degree? I have a degree. I have a bachelor's in fine arts. I went to school for printmaking. Um, I like to draw. I like to teach. I like to give people high fives. And that's what makes him an expert in Game of Thrones. Yes. And I love... You've read all the books. I love to talk shit. But you've read all the books. I've read all the books. That is what makes you an expert yes. in Game I of Thrones. I love the show, and I love the books equally. So that is I also five books like more I can than I've read. I can talk about them with a... I'm biased towards either of them, so I can talk about them impartially. Nice. Hey, Ted. Um, you're hey, on, James. You're on the mic and not the one-two, right? <laughs> Absolutely. One, yeah. Two, okay. Absolutely. <laughs> three, three, no, Just I, I know. He's uh, actually, I it's happened he's actually before, in the man. He's actually in the bathroom and he's doing a number two. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. Hey, now. <laughs> Whoa. It's, it's uh, an audio show. <laughs> yeah. It's not, yeah. Why? What, screw it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, John and I are in different places, but Ted's also, Ted's actually in I'm a different also, room. I'm also taking a shit. I'm yeah. just doing it in Ted's room. That's what Ted and I he do every episode. <laughs> he just really. now found out about it. <laughs> it's a one bathroom apartment. <laughs> <laughs> all right so all right, you guys want to talk about some game of thrones <laughs> i suppose we maybe could do that yeah Tyrion uh, lannister died on the toilet he no that's tywin yeah, he did that's tywin, he did. tywin. tywin. That's hey, but meant. Tyrion lannister the newest, died. you guys didn't know that this is if you go back if you go like because all cersei, this already happened cersei gave someone <laughs> the bow to give to Bronn to hire him to kill Tyrion yeah. on the toilet that did happen in this episode yes because she wanted she you know everyone's Tyrion's all like I trust my sister. She just, you know, I really just think at the end of the day, she cares about sur- her care- survival. And Cersei's she's like, well, my best, survival. my best way at survival is to hole up in every single castle <laughs> and fucking Westeros yep. and, uh, and wait for uh, them to deal with the dead. And then, you know, I'll be safe. We got plenty of fire. Yeah. So... <laughs> So well, I don't know. I actually and, and didn't catch just... that bar, that bit about the crossbow. I thought that the point, the, yeah. the I thought the yeah. poetic justice was that how Bronn tried to shoot down the dragon with a giant crossbow and it didn't work, and so she gave him a small crossbow. But now I understand. <laughs> it's that it's, it's a lot more yeah topical. He, that's for... what he used <laughs> yes. to shoot yes. shoot his you father. Know, out I the still toilet. think those crossbows are going to come into play because. Yeah, that one giant crossbow didn't work, but a hundred of those giant crossbows is going to work. Are going to sure. work excellently <laughs> yeah. against a dragon. You know, yeah, dragons, yeah. dragon well, having two big dragons is cool and all, but at the end of the day, like there are ways to be a dragon. All yeah. you need is one well timed ice spear, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's all that apparently really he just carries around with him everywhere. <laughs> he, I'm king. sure he can make it. He just pulls it out <laughs> yeah, of his ass. Yeah, that's true. He's yeah. Like, ah, but, hold on, I ran out of spears. <laughs> oh. Just and like us like, on the toilet during the podcast. Why do you, you know, the rest of us just get our ice spears out of thin air. Why, did, why, <laughs> why do you, do you have to pull ass? it out of your ass? Yeah. <laughs> it's the same. It's like, how did they get all those arms? I'm skipping to the end of this episode. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, maybe we should go in order. I don't know. But there's there's all those arms and like a weird yeah. swastika symbol. Uh-huh. And the kids start screaming like a demon. And... He can have, they took the arms from other people. I don't know. 
Yeah, <laughs> hands, man. Jamie Lannister <laughs> lost his hand. Yeah, what, what do you mean where yeah. they got all the arms? They got all the arms from all the people they killed. Yeah, I guess so. There's no other place. They have I mean, arms, other and now they don't. That they did, or people they didn't kill and just took their arms away, but that doesn't seem like very in line with <laughs> they let you know, them go. The they let them live. Yeah. <laughs> Those people are fine now. Sometimes they got craving them. for arms. They're lacking you know, arms. Just gotta, yeah. So I would you just got, the, like, got the taste for arms. Only arms will satisfy. Not having arms would really suck, man. I would, I, but I guess it's better than being dead. But <laughs> Appar- apologies to anyone listening to the podcast that might not have an arm. But I'm know. sorry, guys. <laughs> but you, I mean, I'm sure it does suck. It just, but I bet. But uh, an ice zombie didn't take your arm, most likely. It's so, yeah. so next episode, it's gonna be word for word between um between Bran and Jamie because Bran Stark is yeah. there in the courtyard in Winterfell, and the very end of the episode, we see Jamie Lannister get to Winterfell. Yes, and. The last time they saw each other, Jamie pushed Bran out a window yes. and crippled yep. him. And so we're going to see gonna Jamie go? come up to Bran. He's going to be like, hey, you need a push? I've and seen that sh- meme and so have you, Ted. <laughs> and Bran's going to be like, hey, meme. you need a hand? Uh, yeah, it's a good... No, you know what's going to happen? Uh, no. Is Bran yeah. just going to be like, man, I don't care. I'm, I'm not even Bran anymore. And Jamie's gonna be like, well, I still feel bad about it. And there's he's gonna not be a whole Bran. S- he's a three-eyed raven. Yeah, he's yeah. like, I'm the, th- I'm the, th- I'm a, I'm a freaking bird now, dude. And, <laughs> I'm a bird. And, yeah, bird and, man. Uh, Jamie's, Jamie's gonna. Did just... you see the article where the um, showrunners of Game of Thrones told Bran to play the part like Doctor Manhattan? No, that's cool. Yeah. That's definitely like a thing that um, that they told him to do. I think it's telling that we have skipped to these things that happen at the very end of the episode because the, re- the best part because <laughs> the rest of the episode, of the episode was very. I, I hope there's a spoiler. We never yeah. said a verbal spoiler alert, but I oh, hope there, there's a spoiler. Yeah. I think it's obvious. Yeah. And hopefully, if you don't know Game of Thrones, you're not listening. Yeah. Why would you listen? I so don't know. skip to the other part of true the that, time code. True that, you know. True. Um. Yeah. Because I think uh, my only real other nitpick or or anything was just that i thought that the whole dragon writing sequence was cool but that it never no matter what they were going to do with that no matter how what it ended up being the first time someone else wrote a dragon it was never going to live up to what my brain had concocted for that sort of scenario so i think that it was all it's just always i don't know it never um it was cool but it wasn't as cool as i wanted it to be but it was it might never have been that as cool as i wanted it to be i guess sure yeah yeah um well it hasn't been established that only targaryens can ride the dragons isn't I, that a thing maybe i don't know <laughs> i don't i don't know if they have really established that in the show as much as they, yeah. i feel like they did there's I'm sure well, there's, there's, there's been part... at least a moment where maybe Sam or Sam Sam or someone has said something about that. Mm. Whenever they um, finish the dragon ride and they're just kissing by the waterfall, and everybody or like the dragons are staring at them, and every, yeah. everybody <laughs> seems to have taken that as more of a like your pet watching you at the end of the bed kind of a thing. Right. But I took yeah. it more. That happens. I took it more as the dragon going like, "Dude, that's your aunt. Stop." What are you doing? <laughs> yeah, the I, dragon knows more yeah, like, yeah. than we think. That's a good point. Well, I'm thinking this next episode, we figure out that they are related at the exact yeah. same time that the rest of the world figures out that Jamie is fucking Cersei. So mm. it's going to be like, well, the Lannisters are doing it. The, the Targaryens are doing it. Already. Like, everyone knows that. So or, I can see yeah. the both everyone being like, knows hey, they fucked each other. Everyone in King's Landing already knows. Like that's no one like, is pretending they. And don't. they all like, know that Joffrey true. and Tommen were both Cersei and Jaime's yeah. children. Yeah, yeah. Their like hair every, color. that's like. I mean, it's kind of became such a thing of gossip that you, that it's like the, mm-hmm. one of those gossip things that's actually true. That's outspoken. <laughs> that's kind of how they secret. portrayed it in both the book and the show. Is they mm-hmm. just kind of made it just like, hey, this is one of those things that like everybody knows it. Yeah, <laughs> maybe a lot of people are like, "Well, I don't know if it's true or not, but it's more it's funnier than if it wasn't, and it's actually true." Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> it's definitely true. I don't know. There definitely were a side of people who who didn't believe it, who believed that Rob <clears throat> sired those kids, but you know. Well, what from um, the books can be added to the conversation of this season, this episode, since they're they're not really they're following the books the, uh, at the at this point, I guess. Well, I, um, 
I want to say first that I think they're doing a great job of <coughs> bringing the themes of the book. Um, because, you know, you make little changes in season two cause huge changes in season six. Like, that's just sure. how it works. And that's like even George, like, I think George Martin wrote a thing, wrote something about <coughs> that, about how that's kind of, they compound. Mm-hmm. Um, like what and they've done a good job. Like, I know um, Lady Stark, like the their mother, right? Mm. In the books, doesn't she become Lady Grey Stone? Um, yeah, in the books, actually, Sansa never marries Ramsay Bolton. Okay. Um, it's Jane uh, Jane Poole, who is she's she's just she's a noble, a daughter of a nobleman in the court. Of, and she goes through the of, same stuff of, Sansa uh, does. Yeah, of Ned Stark, and she goes through the same thing. She ends up in King's Landing, kind of trapped there. They're best friends in the book. Um, she talks about her friendship with Jane, and then she realizes that Jane leaves and is and is basically. They pretend that Jane is Sansa Stark. They give her to Ramsay mm-hmm. Bolton. Like this is the heir of the North because they think Sansa's mm. dead, and um, and so Jane is basically touted as Sansa Stark. Sansa goes back to the Eyrie, and Littlefinger tries to marry mm-hmm. her, and I can't remember all the details, but it just things ended up being kind of similar, or at least approaching that. At the mm. end of the fifth book is when Jon <coughs> Snow, spoiler alert, Jon Snow dies. <laughs> Which is the end of season five. Um, yeah, that's the, the end show. of, yeah, or, yeah, it's the end of season five and book five. And or is it the end of season six? Because, no, I think, it was I think it's season five. Season five because five. season was six five? is when he's revived, yeah. Okay. So it's so the end of season five and book five, and, like, that's, like, Does that book... mean season six is the first season of, like, new stuff? Yes. That we've had for Mostly. The show? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's okay. post-book. Oh, that's there, when, I that's think the book the stuff that's supposed with to be Winds of Winter. The stuff with Bran in that season was probably carried over from book yeah, five. Yeah, and there's some stuff that's happening in book era in season eight that happened in book five, oh. that they explained in book five. Oh, the Golden Company yeah. stuff? That, so... In the sh- in the um, in the books, the baby that Sir Gregor killed, um, the mountain, the yeah, the mountain, Sir Gregor the mountain that he killed during when um, Rhaegar was killed and the Mad King was killed. Um, that baby was Aegon Targaryen, and he was actually instead of being killed, he was taking taken secretly away and um, brought in ra- brought to um, Essos, the southeastern con- continent. And raised there. That's not Jon Snow. Jon That's S- not Jon Snow. Jon Snow is then who... <clears throat> is he I, Agar? He's, he's I guess he's probably... I don't know what Jon Snow's name would be. It's one of the... It could be Rhaegar. It's probably Rhaegar, actually. But Jon Snow's real think, name is probably Rhaegar. I think it's Aegon in the show. No, Aeg- in the show it's Aegon. But in the book, Aegon is, is the baby. Oh, uh, yeah. Aegon's a baby that was supposed to have been murdered. And I think in the show, they make that baby... Jon Snow. Yeah. But in the book, that baby is Aegon, who lives in Essos, and Jon Snow is the secret daughter that no one knew that son. Yeah. Or the yeah, sorry, the secret, <laughs> the secret son. Okay, there's something John that Snow's everyone actually know about a woman Snow. confirmed. Too. Yeah, Jon Snow is actually. Jon Snow's got beautiful long hair. <laughs> he does. Yeah, John Jon Snow. That's actually planned for the next for season nine. The secret season nine is is about Jon Snow's coming. Is Jon Snow um, coming out the transition? Out. <laughs> yeah, and it's really cool actually. Um, Jan, Jan's John. Jan Snow um, is a uh, so okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Sorry, so, <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> so as John, as someone who has read the books, is this? Do you? Okay. So I have a friend, Micah, who has read the books and does not like what they've done changes wise on the show. Do you like the changes they've made and the direction they've gone past the ends of the books or do you, are you not really a fan? Would you rather they do exactly what the books did or whatever? Um, I, I like them simply because I know they couldn't pass. They just couldn't do what the books did. There yeah. was no way to develop that. So what, so like they'd have to go back and like really flesh out the golden company. Cause the golden company has a huge part in the books and then show a whole new character and develop a whole new character of the Aegon. And he's like a kid in the books who's basically like being raised to be king. In the books, the Golden Company actually takes Storms in in the name of Aegon and this guy who like raised him, who is the guy who gets, in the books he gets stone skin as opposed to mm, Jorah, Jorah getting stone right. skin. So he's the guy in the books who gets stone skin, and they they took that part of the plot and gave it to Jorah, which, which I thought was a good the, decision. That's the thing <clears throat> from Fantastic Four. Turn to the thing. 
Yeah, except, oh, weak, boy. except you're weak and sick instead of <laughs> super strong and like invincible. <laughs> it's a little bit different. Yeah. It's the same. <laughs> Ted, Ted, all right, Ted, Ted, that's not true. <laughs> it is true. <laughs> Ted, I think you I think you're losing your mind. <laughs> that's um, the thing, Ted. All Ted right. is becoming the thing. Ted has stone skin, but in the brain. Um, <laughs> and and uh, they take Storm's End. Or is it Storm's? Is it Storm's End? Shit, that's something I can't. I can't. I don't know. I think it's Storm's End. <laughs> Either way, they take they take the uh, former the former holding of Stannis and Robert, and then Stannis Baratheon, and um, oh, that that's like the end of the, the fifth book. No, saw... that's the end of the fifth book. Like that's not that's not in the shows at all. Like that's fine because I like. Because they kind of had to combine Aegon's story and Jon Snow's story right. and make Jon Snow Aegon. When Jon Snow in the book is probably, I don't think I don't think that John, that George Martin's going to finish the books, and if he does, great. But uh, <laughs> that's awesome. Um, I but I think Jon Snow's name would have been day. Rhaegar. Um, and if and if George Martin doesn't finish the books, it's probably going to be like Neil someone Gaiman. in his estate or something. Neil Gaiman, you think that he would write in his will? I think he could. Yeah, it'd be like a Tolkien situation. Because other people say Brandon Sanderson, and I love Brandon Sanderson's book, but I do not want Brandon Sanderson finishing Game of Thrones. It's not Neil Gaiman's a great writer, and I could see him. Neil Gaiman would be great for it. Bad, Um, (laughs) but not, but but uh, but not not Stephen King because I haven't read any Stephen (laughs) King books. But apparently, the dude can't finish a book. Um, that's what I've heard by many people who love who love Stephen King. They're like he he can't finish a story, mm. and uh, the the last thing Game of Thrones need is needs right. someone who can't finish it. No Game of can finish a story because the Game of Thrones books are like not anywhere near finishing that story in seven right. books. Like I'm like, there's no fucking way. If he dies, yeah, he <laughs> there's way Gaiman. too many Neil loose Gaiman ends. There's way too many complex job. character interactions and shit. That's like, there's yeah. Mm-hmm. My there's, my only like book to movie correlation because i don't read a ton of books <laughs> as ted knows uh my only like book to movie thing is like is the harry potter movies pretty much is that i read all of those and i watched all the movies and obviously oh, yeah. and there's a lot of similar what you're talking about where like oh they change one yeah. thing in book two by the time they get to the sixth book it's a billion times you know there's a little a lot of stuff that that snowball effects into that or whatever like um totally you know, characters that they had to omit because of time in the movies or something that play a bigger role later on that oh we had no idea that character was going to do something important so we didn't even have them um i feel like, that like that's... nearly headless nick sure yeah uh, <laughs> very <laughs> well he was in like the first movie or two yeah but... yeah headless, yeah how was it he had a huge I mean, he just he became a really good friend of Harry's in the show. That's just know, one like, example. Because like but, headless Harry did a lot for headless Nick in the yeah, first two books. Did. I know. He's like I, he went to his death day party. Right. Yeah, like, yeah. Harry's like Harry's just like he was what, a good just, friend for nearly headless Nick. He was like not many people are that good to ghost. Right. But there's they really, uh, she really okay. does like build up Harry's like subtle like. My comparison I hit a nerve. I hit a was that <laughs> I like but, but, both of them for different reasons. <laughs> like I like the books even though they flesh it out. But I still like the movies, and I think it's the same situation where Game of Thrones is like, I know it's different, and even though I haven't read the books, I know there's a lot of stuff missing, but it's still good. I don't know. Do you think that either one of them did a better job? Oh, wait, you know, I guess you wouldn't have... Do you think that... How do you feel about the job that Harry Potter books did? I think they got all the core... The core important things. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're missing like I don't know I, the when the first Harry Potter movie came out, it was like all the different trials that Harry has to go through at the end of the book to get to the right um, the area. Stone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, they they cut out like more than half of those, and there was like True. a there was yeah, like a like lava the ocean, bridge. The ocean was really important. Yeah, and there was like <laughs> a giant that he had to fight and all this stuff. And yeah. but then when and so I was upset about that at the time. But then when I watched the movie again, it's like oh that doesn't that didn't affect anything. Like it's mm-hmm. not part of the it's not part of the the story beats that add up to the actual end of the movie or whatever. So yeah. I feel like the same that- kind of goes for this, especially because they're they're it. I don't know if if either of you have seen Full Metal Alchemist at all, <laughs> but I've uh, seen the first like I've seen the first like seventy episodes. <laughs> only only the first seven but, the, <laughs> but yeah the, i mean it's a similar situation where they were going off the manga and then the manga they caught up to it and had to go pat we have to keep making the yeah. show that's and so way they different just made than up what, their own uh, thing 
It's way different than what like uh, One Piece and the and uh, Dragon Ball did because they, they or One Piece still does. They just instead of catching up, instead of going beyond the mega, they would just make make a lot of put a lot of filler into their episodes. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people just going like, "Oh man, that was really powerful." <laughs> yeah, and then a lot of people just a lot of like filler dialogue and like shit. Just so they like, can keep up, yeah. Just to, yeah, just to draw it out to let to let uh, the, ma- the manga art the manga artists. Yeah, this whole episode is just them grunting. Yeah. Catch up. I recently <clears throat> learned about Spider Man having like you know uh, Gwen Stacy's death like being such a informative aspect yeah. of the character that kind of redid. Are you talking about the way. like Mexican comics that didn't yes. do that? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. There was a line of Mexican comic books that decided like you know what our readers can't handle Spider Man's girlfriend's death. We're just gonna <laughs> keep her alive yeah. and make our own Spider Man comics for the next like <laughs> I like that. I like to read those. It was like thirty yeah. to seventy issues of like yeah. the a completely Mexican different Spider-Man story. Comics. Yeah. Completely different. That's awesome. Continuity. Yeah. Are they really hard to find? I don't know. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. Of those? I, I would buy them. No, they haven't been. They haven't been all. released otherwise. Yeah. Damn. So they're pretty rare. They need cool. to be. They need to. So be. it's just kind of in lore. It's not like something <laughs> yeah. you can like seek out. And read I mean, you probably easily. can seek them out. Um, I bet you could seek them really out, expensive. but like, easily, like it's pretty. Probably pretty. Yeah. Yeah. Difficult. It's something yeah. I didn't know. So but Game yeah, of Thrones. It. <laughs> yeah, should we jump back to Game of Thrones? There was a guys. This is the first time I've ever been on someone's podcast. That's good. That's good. So I'm having I'm having You're doing fun. great, John. I'm having fun. You're doing great. Um, yeah, back to Game of Thrones. Um, Should we walk through maybe the events of it, like the beginning of it? Arya's watching the the procession yeah, let's talk about Arya. come in. Yeah. I know we we haven't really talked about Arya yet, but she's kind of watching the procession, people coming into Winterfell. I like that she, she moves sees... out of the way of the little kid. Yeah, like, it, it mirrors it's basically her. One. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. From the first episode and seeing the king's procession from. Um, that was like King, um, oh, what's his name? King Robert and yeah. Cersei mm-hmm. coming to Winterfell. Yeah. But yeah, it's, uh, it was cool to see John and Daenerys there side by side. And then she, it was, it was fun to like listen to the music change as she saw the hound. She's like, oh, I don't yeah. like that guy. Mm-hmm. She's like, oh, um, the blacksmith, I forget his <laughs> name. What was, what were her emotions about? Let's talk about that. What's, what were her the emotions hound? about the hound? Um, Cause they interact well, when she goes to the blacksmith. Because, yeah. She's like, oh, the, fuck the, the fuck dragon the fire weapon. But they also, I think they... They're, those, they're, he was like, the same you love time, me for dead. Friends. And she said, I They have a mutual too. respect. They, they, yeah. 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 They they know, like, they would have done the same thing think, to each other. I think if that they, hound would have been like, I'm so been, proud of you. Been flipped. That's yeah. That's yeah, really his way. Is. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. He was a parental figure, and that's his yeah. way of saying, I'm proud of you. Like, good you did for the robbing right thing. me, too. I survived. I was just really glad. I'm also a badass. Yeah. I was really glad that they didn't, like, And they're on the same side. And, like, the fact that they're on the same side. Exactly. Exactly. I was not have hugged. They don't, they're never going to no. hug, and that's like... No, they know, I was they glad they did <laughs> Exactly, yeah. I heard you. Like, that's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. that's awesome. Like, they're just like... Uh, I was also glad because it was... Still they, mutual they, They've respect. done a really good job of keeping... I think yeah. the best thing that the show has done with the book is keeping those relationships mm-hmm. and being... Using... It, it, like, they've switched, they've switched around plot points or gotten rid of certain plot points... In a very in a way that I think has worked to create a really good story. Yeah, there's weird plot holes like, like why does the fires why does the dra- why does the undead dragons fire like the frost Blue. dragons fire <laughs> melt ice? Sure, like sure. you know like okay like can he just like blow up the wall with like I don't know but, like that doesn't really matter like that's that shit is just like that's gonna happen and I think the overall the ethos of the is that the right like the right ethos is like the emotional so. kind yeah. of like. Like, yeah, Ethos sounds okay, like a, a land in the Game of Thrones. <laughs> Ethos. That's I right, Ethos. Died, right that was when all Wait, the pirates returned. That is the <laughs> <laughs> It's not Ethos. No, Essos. Essos, Essos. is yeah. the place, James. No, but like the Ethos, or maybe people say Ethos, Pathos, <laughs> Ethos. I don't, don't know. Add, don't ask Ted. That, I like, that my English teacher told I me about. I say words and I wrong can't all remember, the time. I can't remember which ones are which one are involved. But the overall like emotional and... Uh, the overall emotional feeling of the show they keep yeah, they keep the characters they 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 stay true to the characters yeah. like motivations and weaknesses that are that are that are developed in the book and the characters there are characters in the show that get developed way more than characters in the book um um well what's her name Cersei murdered her um i want to say margo but i know it's not margo it's marjorie oh, from the um, marjorie. marjorie yeah yeah 
Yeah, Margot. Yeah. Uh, what, uh, what's Tyrell. Her last name? Tyrell. Tyrell. The Tyrell. House. Margot she, Robbie. Yeah. She, Iron Fist. She does not get developed in the books at all because you can't like. She, there's enough going on in the books that like. Mm. But, but she in the was show, really they developed get, in the show. But by giving her by by the show by having the by having the element of dialogue and visual, you can develop Rinley and her at the same time. Right. And and then focus on her because well, like spoiler alert, Rinley <laughs> Rinley fucking gets murdered by a shadow monster. <laughs> right. That equals Stannis, motherfucking mm-hmm. Stannis. That dude Stannis. Stannis was awful. Stannis was. Really... I really want the shadow baby to come back. I don't know. I know, <laughs> I know it's probably not going to. Want, just yeah, that out. was no, bad. Like <laughs> Stannis goes hard, man, because he really he's so convinced that he's the true king that yeah. he just like contrives everything, and the Red Lady just fucking uses him yeah. so hard. She like she knows the whole time he like it's not his sword that right. like she knows that shit. She's not stupid. <laughs> she's like, but she's just like fucking working it so hard that she just controls this entire this entire <laughs> faction of Westeros into into basically into reaching the goal of which now, was turns she, out to be Beric Dondarrion. Wasn't she on, on Dragonstone? Wasn't she on Dragonstone with yeah, Danny she was and all those Dragonstone. people? But did she leave? Yeah. Because I don't remember her leaving, but she's not in this I episode. I don't remember what happened in the book. Either. The book, that makes us up. That's one of those I was surprised that not to see her in this first episode, um, actually. I, I, if I'm, I might be wrong, but I, if I remember correctly, the book doesn't elaborate on Dragonstone as much as the show does. The yeah. book takes them more towards more north. I can't remember exactly, though. It's been a while since I've read the books, but... Um, I think I finished the fifth book in 2014, 15, yeah, 15, but I also, I have good retention. <laughs> um, I've, yeah. I was obsessed with them. Um, but yeah. Do we, do we they, think, they were... what is, what is the weapon that Arya wants, uh, Gendry to make the like weird It's definitely nunchucks. a dragon stone. Ooh. Not like it's. She's got to have something made of uh, dragon Ooh, glass. I have a complaint about the show. <laughs> what, what's your complaint? Um, it's this is this is a stupid complaint. I'm gonna preface it with that. It's a stupid complaint. It doesn't matter. Uh-huh. Um, it's it, maybe it's only me, but in the show they show um, they show the the hound being made in uh, a. A dragon glass and obsidian axe, and they show the axe. Yes. And basically, mm-hmm. it's an amount of obsidian of obsidian that is the same size as a whole axe blade. That's fucking yeah. stupid because like that's, yeah, that's such a, a waste that's of a waste. obsidian. Yeah. Uh-huh. Like you need yeah. just just make like the the Aztecs the had literal just like just yeah. like large wooden bats that were just covered in a line of sharp of like wait the Aztecs use bats uh, you mean like baseball bats <laughs> they pretty much but yeah, they played they were flattered, baseball they were flattered the and they were lined baseball. in obsidian they invented arrowheads baseball, yeah. and they were basically wow. just these gnarly ass swords and like that's what Arya should have fucking had made <laughs> for him dude like that would have been a cool thing if in the show they had made paid like a subtle homage to like Aztec like obsidian technology by having like a realistic like at least yeah. like let's have a realistic like obsidian weapon cool, instead why of some Game weird of ass axe that will shatter as soon as he hits something with it Game which was gonna lead to lame ass fight scenes where he's gonna be hitting these these monsters with this giant obsidian axe and it's not gonna be shattering but it should be shattering because yeah Anyway, it's <laughs> they could have just they could have just put like yeah like a, a sliver of it on the end of a normal axe or something like yeah that. people would get it they'd be like oh yeah like yeah because that's a right that is literally just a, a piece of glass that's gonna break yeah like, Gentry got the stupid. order Gentry got the order for that axe and went really I could make sixteen thousand arrows with right. this but instead yeah. I have to make a <laughs> yeah. giant I have to make one fucking axe <laughs> what a yeah. Arya like I thought yeah. you were smart and that then like I know Arya has a crush on him and he uh, has a crush on her but maybe he'll lose his crush because he's like she really doesn't know what she's doing she put it or he'll make her order. something better yeah yeah or we'll he'll see. or he'll help her out yeah I hope he's that because. <laughs> I bet yes, they get married. Cool. They're, cool they're gonna marry. get married. Or no, one of them is gonna die. Let's be honest. One of them. My, my yeah, friend, Game of Thrones. <laughs> my friend, my friend true. will describe they their relationship die. as a won't they, won't they relationship. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he doesn't think anything's gonna happen. Yeah, because you're just they're, gonna, they're both gonna die. Honestly, the probably, won't they, won't they honest, sexual probably, tension. Yeah. They're either yeah. both gonna die, or or one is gonna die, and the other is gonna have something horrible happen well, to them. Wasn't my there something about for the end? Do you want to hear my theory for the Game of Thrones? 
I have I have ideas. Uh, I was gonna say, it J- wasn't George R. R. Martin's wife like his her favorite character was is Arya, so she can't die or something like that. I don't know. Yeah, maybe <laughs> it's possible. I what's think your theory that if anyone I, survives, it's Arya. All right, go it's ahead. gotta be Arya. My theory for the end of Game of Thrones, despite all the king queen will they won't they whatever bullshit, it's gonna end with no one being king. Game sure. of Thrones is over. Democracy democracy is in. I don't think it's going to happen. Democracy happy now. I hope it doesn't. That's my theory. <laughs> well, they, they kinda, have a vote. The, they yeah. had the little conversation on the wall looking down That's at uh, right. Daenerys and John, where they're like, oh, you know, maybe for the first time we'll have like a two people ruling hand in hand, like a nice, nice little, a nice little King kingdom Queen. full of nice people. <laughs> so maybe but, I don't know. but that's the obvious then, ending i feel like Tyrion so. though i had a conversation with daenerys she's like he's like hey like what if you die what's the yeah. chain of secession after yeah. you die you know dragons then, the dragons will rule <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they'll do dragon, whatever they want dragon tails right. <laughs> dragon, yeah. yeah that's it. Dragon dragon little, like, the show. Puff the magic tails. dragon babies and game of thrones <laughs> goes into season 12 and it's just like real wow. weird because it's just Magical dragons that can talk. <laughs> wow! Backdoor pilots. Yeah, how to your hot dragon. scoop? <laughs> how to train your dragon? I've been talking to the to the guys to George Martin lately, and he's like, "Yeah, I think that's, that's, a, that's, that's it. That's it. The logical step is to carry it into like a kids show." Absolutely. <laughs> well, yeah, he and sell so, so the Cartoon the Network. Do we have anything else to say about the episode? Are we winding down? I, I liked. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say we're approaching half an hour, so we should probably wrap it up. But I, I did want to mention that Ted, when uh, when my wife went to see How to Train Your Dragon three, I think my favorite thing That's was right. you you saying three. They haven't figured out how to train those dragons yet. <laughs> no, no, I hadn't even thought about that. <laughs> yep. So that's that's topical for out. Game of Thrones. <laughs> it was yes, a good introductory is. episode. I think that it'll movies. get more exciting. Yeah. Okay. It'll Kal- get more exciting uh, from here. Kalisha <laughs> well, didn't even have to train yeah, her it's dragons. Got to. <laughs> they're just like they're just like her children, and I, all children to pay their parents. Right after I watched the premiere, um, John was hanging out with me actually when we watched the premiere of Game of Thrones. But um, I was like, okay, we're gonna play our favorite episode after this, and we we only had time for one favorite episode because they're so long. <laughs> But yeah. I chose Battle of the Bastards. That was such a good yeah, that's episode. A good one. Yeah, that's what John that's what that my problem fight. is with with my friends who say that they don't like the newest seasons because of it, it being too far away from the books and stuff. Is that some of my favorite moments of the show have been from season six and seven, um, the, the Citadel blowing up and the Battle of the Bastards and the uh, whatever the last. Uh, the la- the la- the second to last episode of this last season um the right the where they're on the ice and all that stuff that was i don't know i like all that stuff a lot more than yeah. some of the let's sit yeah. around a table and talk about whose grandpa's related to whose <laughs> other grandpa i'm like i don't care <laughs> so, I don't exactly know. <laughs> yeah i mean yeah that was my second favorite episode what you just said when they're all like beyond it's the beyond the wall episode yeah the suicide squad yeah. episode yeah yes <laughs> oh, so good <laughs> Yeah, that was bad. That's Game of Thrones yeah. at the best. Actually, I love yeah. the Battle of the the Bastards episode, but it's those episodes, those like really, uh, those adventure episodes. Yeah, that, like, the ones where yeah. they like are going, they're moving forward, they're they're looking for yeah. something. There's some sort of it did something that and the that's audience like how I, I mean that's so I guess that's too. what yeah. that's why I love uh, like being a game master and stuff too. Is because that's like the funnest. That's most yeah. part. You do a lot There's of adventure, dungeon master that stuff adventure and, and like giving people options and where you, you don't know what you're going to do next, but you're out there and you're like looking for it. Nice. I like yeah. that a lot. Um, Coming soon, the really... the first Watchtower database Dungeons and Dragons <laughs> tournament. I hope yeah. so. That, that's why I like <laughs> Dragon John Ball. is our DM. That's why I like the first Dragon Ball better than um, the, uh, you know, Dragon Ball Z. I love yeah, Dragon Ball yeah. Z, but I like the first Dragon Ball. This it's seems like a whole other discussion. Based. We can talk about this later. Yeah. We'll have to have yeah, a I like the balls. idea. I like the episode. idea of a D and D podcast. I'm gonna go ahead and like talk about it right now. Okay. Um, I would love to do a D and D podcast with you guys. I don't. Uh, we'll see if we all have the time and schedules. That we can, can make for the it. time. But I think that would be wonderful. Yeah. I, not to toot my own horn, but I am a good <laughs> DM 
GM, game master, <laughs> and I am I am fairly I am fairly experienced. At you see, GM so you can do different games. Yeah, because I don't just run D and I run I run several I run yeah. several different systems, and I'm and so you I can play like Boggle and Dragons. Yeah, Monopoly and Dragons, yeah. Scrabble and Dragons, Dragons and Draws, Backgammon and Dragons and Draws. And, Cards uh, against humanity and dragons. Dungeons and humanity. <laughs> Cards and dragons. Dun- dragons. Dragons against humanity. Yes. This is the final dragons Game of Thrones humanity. episode. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Well, All the right. dragons turn on everyone. Coming soon. Yep. Well, cool. Yeah. All right. Okay. That would be cool. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is the now, end. That's, that's the end. That was great. This is the end. I'm more glad to come. You stayed with us. More Game of end. Thrones. This is the end. More, more of the podcast coming up next. Yes. What Ted said. That was pretty cool. <laughs> that was fun. Okay. Sports now we're back. Corner. There was the there was the transition sound. Yeah, John, you have to be quiet. This is sports corner. Oh, we're back already. You're not. Hold on. We just. I don't, talked I have, to I don't know. I've been. John. Psh, 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 psh. <laughs> it's one of those where I don't know how many times you've done them now, so I don't know if we're on the we're even we're or odd. Psh, psh, psh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's helpful. Okay, yeah, no, no. comic I'll, I'll relief, that later. right? Cool. That's what we yeah. do now. That's what we're doing. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. <laughs> you want me to go first? Yeah, go Shh. first what? and not only. <laughs> <laughs> you need to read more. I really do, but I didn't, I won't. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so I, uh, I, I almost talked about Detective Comics number 1001, but I think I'm going to save that for a graphic content episode. Um, okay. That's good. That's where they reintroduced the Arkham Knight into mainstream comics, which is kind of cool. But yeah. I'll talk about that on the next graphic content. Instead, and he's I'm not talk, Jason Todd. He supposedly. not yet, not yet. But he <laughs> he will be, be soon. <laughs> I don't think he will be. But um, Green Lantern number six. I'll talk about that. That's something okay. I read. Um, so Hal Jordan. Uh, this is the, the Graham Morrison series uh, mm-hmm. that he's doing for Green Lantern right now. He is trying to prove himself with the controllers to be taken seriously as a Black Star, which is like similar to the Dark Stars, mm-hmm. but for some reason now they're called the Black Stars. So, so it he's can be going, more racist. I guess yeah. so. Yeah. <laughs> Although Starfire's sister's name is Blackfire, so That's I don't true. know. But she's in the Justice League Odyssey book right now, so whatever. Anyway, so. Mm-hmm. So Hal is going by the name Black Star Parallax. That's what everyone's okay. calling him right now. <laughs> That's he, a, not a mouthful of a name. Not at all. Yeah. <laughs> so he had to go to the planet Ran, and he is asked by the Black Stars to execute Adam Strange to prove his mm. loyalty. So he like has to point a gun at Adam, and he's like about to just like shoot him dead. But instead, they they do like a little like um, Western. Um, showdown kind of thing mm-hmm. where they have to like take three three paces and shoot at each other and so it seems like he kills adam strange but in hmm. reality he just kind of faked it hmm. so adam strange was able to survive and he was able to like get into the the black star sort of central mm-hmm. group and learn what he needed to know uh, but it was a really cool issue he it was just kind of fun to see like adam strange and him adam didn't know what was up so he was like how jordan's about to kill me like come on dude like we're friends <laughs> don't do this you know and um you're but... black star parallax <laughs> yeah <laughs> what the heck like, like what are you doing <laughs> classically so... you wouldn't do something like this black star parallax <laughs> <laughs> yeah. what happens when like a laser is being fired at hal from at like two feet away, and someone has to shout his name to warrant to watch out, Black Star Parallax. Black Star Parallax, there's a laser coming for. <laughs> that means he gets move hit out of by the, the way, laser. Black Star Parallax. Nope, it does not. <laughs> it does not happen. <laughs> Can't warn someone with a name like that. Is Hal short for something? I've never Howard. Ha- I think really or, or what yes. is <laughs> Hal short for? I've never thought about it. Hal. Oh, it's a Henry. Oh. It's a Henry thing. That's weird. Um, it's Hal Howard. is a venerable nickname for Henry, Harry, and Harold. Okay. Harold. Harold, Harold. makes more sense because it has an L in it, but yeah. yeah that's uh, such a lame name. So his should, he should name should be like Harold the Black Star Parallax. <laughs> or, you know, just make it long. Make it as long as possible. Sure. <laughs> why, why not? <laughs> anyway. Well, I don't... It's a cool <laughs> that's issue. It ends, it ends with um, like how revealing that like hey it's cool i was on i was a good guy the whole time 
Yeah. <laughs> you know. Can we just call him Harold from <laughs> yeah, yeah, Harold, Harold Jordan. Jordan. Um, <laughs> look for the next Vanishing Point episode. Vandal, all about Randall Savage. Yeah. Randall Savage and Harold Jordan hanging out. <laughs> well, cool. That's what I read. It was, it's been a great read. Yeah. Um, I feel like I don't don't know for sure, but when the first issue of this run came out, there was a double page spread at the end where it was kind of like all the stuff to look forward to for the next year of story. Superboy and Crypto. <laughs> right well, except not it was um there was a panel of like all these different multiverse versions of green uh-huh. lantern including oh. the justice lords and stuff oh. was there so it was like and this is the guy who wrote multiversity that comic wait did so, it say stuff to look forward to next year is that what oh, coming word? like coming in the series okay so it was basically. like and then we're taking a break for nine months and we'll see no 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 um <laughs> yeah just like the stories you should expect to read over the okay. next okay well, okay. Um, maybe next time I'll have a comic, but I won't. Um, we can just talk. We can do. We can move on to everyone's trash. Cause that's the yeah. name of the segment now. <laughs> Let's stick into everyone's trash. I knew it would eventually have a name. It it's, only took it used forty-one to be the episodes. Untitled mail segment for forty now it's episodes. Everyone's trash. Yeah. I still kind of miss untitled mail segment, but I like everyone's trash too. Uh, this is from Josh Get it because Tahu. It's he the questions. What? It's the questions, and he, yeah, yeah, that's he why digs through everyone's to, trash. Okay, we don't need to explain it every time. I just did. Um, I know. Uh, <laughs> Josh Tahu, he he uh, he ats us a lot on Twitter, not in a bad way. I'm just saying he's on the show don't a lot me. because of it. Um, he says, "Hey DCAU Watchtower, I was wondering what is your favorite DC animated series from the DCAU and not from the DCAU? Also, how are you guys going to celebrate Batman's 80th anniversary?" uh i'm We're gonna celebrating watch batman, it i guess i'm gonna write a uh what fan web comic yeah set in, <laughs> in the batman in the year that he world. quits yeah <laughs> that's how i'm gonna Which celebrate this it this year you're also we're all, i mean yeah i guess it's all a year i'm celebrating it yeah. by doing everything i normally do in a year which is 90 making batman, batman videos on youtube yeah, yeah. exactly <laughs> um my, my favorite, favorite DCA show, yeah. What do you Batman, have? the anime sure. series, of course. Okay. Obviously, it's the best one. I think mine's probably Justice League Unlimited. That's just because it feels the most adult, choice. but I think yeah. Batman's a clo- very close second. Yeah. Um, favorite non DCAU mm-hmm. one? Young uh, Justice, maybe. I think I might yeah. pick that. Yeah. I was going to say Teen Titans, but probably Young Justice. Teen Titans is like cool, but it's not as cohesive narratively. Mm. It's just a bunch of stuff. <laughs> young yeah. justice has like a overarching story and they've thought very hard about what's gonna right. happen next and stuff mm-hmm. all right um uh, i think the rest of these i don't know there's a couple more that aren't from discord i'll do the non-discord ones first hey okay. what do you know this is from josh tahu on twitter <laughs> he says again. hey oh, dc you watched uh, <laughs> just watched your mr freeze video that's the last vanishing point mm-hmm. uh and was thinking about how and where exactly Mr. Freeze ended up when we first saw him in Batman Beyond? How did Dr. Lake find him? This would be better if Maddie was here with us today. But uh, Well, I've... there was the um, Batman Adventures number 15. Remember that issue? There was um, there, yeah, the, well, there's... an alternate... Well, the there's way the, that the ends... comic issues that Maddie suggests reading of Mr. Freeze at the end of the Vanishing Point yeah. episode that details this, essentially. But yeah, it's... I mean, yeah, go. Go ahead. I don't know. <laughs> well, the original <laughs> version of the script, um, from what the writer said, I forget which writer. Um, mm-hmm. I think his name was Jason Hall. I think that's right. But I don't he, know. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. There was like a f- weird um, Mr. Freeze subplot going on in yeah. the comics where like even Nora, she's married to this guy named Dr. D'Angelo. Yeah, it was the guy that like cured her or helped to bring yeah. her back to life or whatever yeah and he ended up being in like three issues or so of these tie-in comics and they're yeah. being kind of like this overarching plot with mr freeze mm-hmm. but it seems to me like at the batman adventures one he it kind of ends with him like uh his head sinking to the bottom of the ant arc yeah. so i assume and i think the original script it was supposed to be this way is that powers tech would have discovered that and right taken his head into their laboratory and tried to like counter engineer it's kind of one of the it's it's uh i can't remember what it reminds me of but there's there's something else in pop culture that's very similar where frankenstein like, frankenstein at the, at the very end of the, <laughs> okay yeah but Mary no, Shelley's I'm, frankenstein. I'm, I'm talking storyline wise where like there's a status quo that you have to mm-hmm. just keep 
coming back to and that status quo is that Mr. Freeze's uh, okay. head is somewhere. Yeah. Like there's because it I mean New Bam his new Batman Adventures episode ends with his oh his head's gone, so he's out there somewhere, and the next time you see him in Batman Beyond, <laughs> he's just a head still. Sure. So well, I any... said Frankenstein just because he's like the immortal monster who <laughs> yeah, yeah, walks yeah. into the Arctic. Sure. At the end. But he's yeah. also Dr. Frankenstein because he did it to himself. <laughs> no, I'm talking about Frankenstein's monster. I know. He's both, though. <laughs> anyway. Right, but, he, right. he, uh, <laughs> but yeah, the, the comics just brought it back to that same sort of status quo of like his head's in a place. And there, I'm pretty sure that there was a, yeah, like a canceled issue or a story they never got to tell where Derek Power's dad. Yeah. It was the, the Batman head. Adventures yeah. number 15. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, totally. It was that so, one. So, well, but there's also there Gotham Adventures. Too, Gotham yeah. Adventures number fifty one yeah. was by the same mm-hmm. writer. So yeah, they like flow right into each other. Yeah. Gotham Adventures number five was by Ty Templeton, I think. Yeah, I'm and probably getting it wrong, but I know that that the Gotham Adventures and the Batman Adventures one have the same like. It's fifty one n- and fifteen, which is easy to remember because they have reverse numbers. They have, of each Nora other. has the same like note from Victor Freeze that mm. like come be come find me. I'm a good person and stuff. <laughs> and yeah. it, it's like I think Maddie has. And it might be different now, but a couple of years ago, we went, when Maddie was investigating that stuff, it was like one one of a couple of different things in those comics that show that those two series kind of overlap with each other mm-hmm. which which also just helps with the whole bat suit thing of them being the sure. same bat suit <laughs> but right uh right. yeah but so yeah that's that's how josh um <laughs> this is from noah olson on comments on our video on some video uh do you think we will ever see any of the lanterns in the worlds of dc someday so like the dc extended universe uh someday i was thinking it could be a cool idea in the next podcast for you guys to discuss which dc movies you think will happen or not uh let's Aren't just start supposed with the to get a green thing. lantern core movie as far as i yeah. know that's still on the docket like yeah, i, I guess it was, so until they say I think it's it was not, supposed yeah. to be next year but it has not been filming so no they haven't talked about it at all and, it's, it must yeah. have been pushed back at this point because they just wrapped birds of prey yeah that and wonder woman 84 i think are the yeah. two 2020 movies yeah and um, suicide squad 2 seems to be a little more or the suicide squad whatever they call it seems yeah. to be the next one I don't really have a desire to see anything in this universe. <laughs> like, if they're gonna make live action DC movies, I would. I'd rather want be them standalone, just... like Joker. Yeah, like I kind of like that. That separates them from mm-hmm. the Marvel stuff, where it doesn't have to be. I know that the point of connecting them is so that they can do more team ups, they can do more cameos and whatever. But I don't we, know. We're definitely gonna see another Justice League movie with Jason Momoa, Gal Gadot, and um, sure. But and I like the I like having like Zachary oh Levi. the Zack Snyder did a Superman movie and Christopher Nolan did a Batman movie and every, you know just like different directors takes on stuff that mm-hmm. Marvel's not gonna have as much of. They have different well, that, director styles, but they all yeah. have to stick yeah. stick to the thing. The Marvel um, formula, right? <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, no, that seems to be what DC's doing, is they're giving the directors that sort yeah. of room to give their own voice. I guess so. they've sort of all felt that way anyway. Maybe that's mm-hmm. part of why they don't feel like they connect very well, is because they let right. the directors do too much different stuff. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I mean, I'd rather have that myself. So yeah. I'm cool with it. Um, I think it's they've obviously been really sloppy <laughs> with sure. the, building the superhero universe, but... Do we think that we will see the Green Lanterns anyway? Yeah. I mean, I think we saw one in Justice League, so. Yeah. <laughs> so there Some go. weird alien. I think it's a matter of time. Um, yeah. But I think they just have to be smart about the way they map it out. Yeah. Um, in the type uh, of story they do. Bob, Bob, the random guy, he says, this is all Discord now. The Discord is linked somewhere below where we're talking right now. Uh <laughs> Bob, 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 the random guy says you're given 22 minutes to share a definitive DCAU episode with someone. If you choose the wrong episode, they will never watch another DCAU episode. <laughs> what episode do you show to get someone to want more? Just Maddie obviously one. responded critters. <laughs> nice. Well, you can't do any Justice League episodes because it's part yeah, one. they're all two part or part two. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I think I had mentioned it. that, but then the if it's a good enough first part, then maybe they'll be like, well, yeah. I want to watch the second part. Yeah, so nice but i don't know um, um 
I gotta <coughs> think about that for a second. I would probably because I go... I think someone said Robin's Reckoning like the first part because that's one of ah. my favorite episodes. But, but it definitely ends on like a oh no, a Batman and Robin gonna f- be be mad at each other. Uh-huh. Oh no, so <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Uh, uh... I like that one. That's a good choice, I guess. Um, I wanna, also... I'm, I'm thinking back to like Batman the Amazing Series because mm-hmm. it's, I said earlier that was my favorite. So probably Heart of Ice. Again, sure. Mr. Freeze, that's that's a great choice. Um, even though I love like Feet of Clay and Two-Face are probably my favorite. Yeah. But those it's hard harders. to pick one episode, I guess, because mm-hmm. I've always talked Maybe about a, a that I've shown. Episode. Well, I've shown people the series of Batman Beyond yeah. first as an entry point because it doesn't take yeah. as much knowledge Ink. of the universe. It's a great episode for that. Yeah. I'd probably sure. share Ink. But I mean, the re- the first part of Rebirth, he's not he doesn't even be Batman by the end of that episode. So mm-hmm. it's it's kind of hard to be like, does that is that interesting enough to you? Do you want to watch the rest of all right. like six other shows or whatever? <laughs> so yeah. Um, Anyway, uh, Den Toons comic question: What DCAU show do you think has the biggest impact on you in terms of your life and career? Like, which Ooh. one inspires you the most, or has the greatest influences on what you do? Well, this is I a would different again, question than earlier. Yeah, I would again say JLU. I think only because I would actually switch my answer to JLU for that yeah, question. I think there's two reasons for me. One is that it's a it's a lot of interweaving continuity type storytelling mm-hmm. and that's what we like to do and talk about. I don't think I don't think we'd have legacies if it wasn't no. for JLU. And then the well or well, I mean a lot of the subject matter of our videos comes from those from that show also. <laughs> Just because right. it has a lot of surface level uh references to everything uh, else. And then I think another reason is just because it's I don't know, it's one of the first it probably like that and slash justice league is what started me on this path. And then mm-hmm. watching all the, I watched the Batman Superman movie on VHS and stuff and phantasm, but it was, I was the first just League was the first show that I like purposely watched and taped and everything. So nice. Um, yeah, that one. <laughs> yeah. That's our answers. Uh, Maxi Sona. I think that's how you say it. What storylines would you like to see in a hypothetical Jean Jones the animated series? <laughs> well, uh, I'm reading the Martian Manhunter comic right now, and okay. I'm really liking it. It's a 12 issue. Is that the one where he has a weird, like, bug eyed yeah. cover? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Um, I'm actually really liking it. And they just, um, I think it's a new villain, but there's a villain there called Karn, C A R rn or something like that it's, okay. but it's it's a very like red looking martian uh-huh. type and it seems to be there's there's a lot of talk about haran Mir's curse it being mm. like the plague that destroyed the martian society right. and it being not like a physical plague but a mental plague like an mm-hmm. idea um that's incepted into you and yeah ideas are just as contagious and dangerous as any other virus you know mm-hmm. So Haran Mir's curse would have to be a, an element of it. Yeah. Karn is a really cool um, creature. It's very much like a Martian who um, was just like poisoned by this curse. And it's it's a it's still early in the series. I don't have a hundred percent like context of who Karn is yet. Um, <laughs> but I, they're really creepy, and I like them. <laughs> so, he's a long yeah. dreadlocked haired band. He's no Karn, not Karn. at all. Imagine. <laughs> Uh, imagine carnage actually okay from spider-man as like a martian type and I mean, he's a cr- it's a crossover i yeah i guess it depends for me if we're <laughs> if we're saying this series is is in the dcau or if it's just its own like separate you know dc supergirls mm. kind of just whatever take a super, DCAU. whatever that's called you know superhero sure. girls as i meant um if it was dcau i'd like to see more flashbacks to when imperium everybody was killing all the mm. martians and like if there's any stories to tell with the resistance and all that stuff i'd also like to see what he's up to right now in china uh, and maybe things. maybe even as a detective detective yeah john jones. doing john jones stuff that's what uh, the, the comic is doing is switching back and forth okay. from his past on mars and being a current detective well, there you go. <laughs> Great. It's been an awesome read four issues so far. And then I think maybe it would be cool to introduce that Malafaak guy from... His uh, brother. Yeah, yeah, just like Doom and whatever else he's in. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, a good John villain for sure. Yeah, I mean, he's um, basically the... He's the um, 
He's the Marvel villain of Jean Jean because he's just the evil that guy. <laughs> I'd like to see the human flame. Um, I think was his name. Oh, okay. <laughs> who was the guy who uh, killed John in Final Crisis? Oh. He um, like there was this character named Libra who was offering all the villains sort of their like have your greatest desire met and join me um, mm. because I'm a herald for dark side. And like, as long as you pledge with me, like we'll grant your wish. And so like <laughs> the secret society of villains get together, like Grodd, Luthor, um, Cheetah and like Libra is kind of pitching this to them. And this little, like this random dude named the human flame who looks like he's got like a Mario brothers mustache. Like he, <laughs> he looks like a bit of a loser. Wow. Super villain. And so <laughs> just he's like, on fire. <laughs> yeah. So seriously, look him up human. I think his name was human flame. I'm going to double check, but he, um, the human torch. Wish, uh, I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's not human. It is. Uh, am I right? Am I right? Am I right? Yep. Fire I'm right. Bad. I'm, very, it is the human flame. So he, um, kills john that's his greatest wish is he a human um, or is he a martian he is he, okay. he's basically like firefly he's was just he a, a different supervillain that became this or was he just a guy that was like i'll do it i'll be fireman no yeah he um he did become i i forget the the book he had his own four issue series um that was the okay. tie into final crisis i believe you <laughs> uh yeah. Mar- and, marvel and king as wikipedia looks like he actually <laughs> premiered in detective comics okay. number 274 from 1959 interesting wow. so he goes back he's a great uh, <laughs> marshman hunter villain <laughs> okay i want to move on to the next thing marvel king says what kinds of stories would you like to see in a flash of the animated <laughs> god damn it uh, <laughs> uh, well obviously the rogues captain cold he wave all those guys mirror master I don't know why Maddie's answer to this was this. Maybe it was a different uh, question that I accidentally got in the screenshot too. But it so it says, "What kinds of stories would you like to see in a Flash animated series?" And then Maddie says, "How hard does Tab? De- uh, I screwed that up. How hard does Ted dab on the haters? And can we get video evidence?" <laughs> I, Wait, I don't know what. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what that's. I don't in think I dab to. that hard on the haters. <laughs> what, what haters are we? having hard on anyway is that what you'd like to see in a flash the animated series um, no it's no, not no. at all i don't know how, what that has anything to do with the flash animated series i hope that i just butchered it completely and maddie's just really mad listening to this maddie's, uh, you do okay not i'd like to, to see cross maddie james little james listen it, to me james yes don't don't make maddie mad <laughs> Just trust me. That, trust me. Maddie trust also me. put that a uh, reference to that in me. the next vanishing point. So. Because you don't want to do it. You don't. Yeah, I don't want to get on your. There's a side. reason why it's called the vanishing point. <laughs> You've never heard from anyone else who's gone. To the we can. Point. We can really do the. This is James Strecker filling in for <laughs> Ted, Ted Kendrick, who's filling in for Maddie Washburn <laughs> because uh, you got murdered. Um. So oh, anyway. No. Uh, no. Captain Boomerang, Captain, all the rogues, all, all the, the captains. captains. Yeah, uh, all the. I'd, the. I'd like to see more classic stuff than what the Flash TV show is doing. Flash TV show is doing a lot of new. I'd 52 like to see the stuff. Flash family, like uh, Max Mercury and Impulse. Sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Impulse for sure would be cool. The version that we didn't get in that pilot, just yeah. like pilot. <laughs> um, right. Right um uh, abracadabra he's a villain yeah. from the future there's That's a bunch of flash fun. villains that are in the bar in jlu that we never see do anything except the turtle go, Whoop, and just leave. turtle man yeah <laughs> turtle man <laughs> and yeah abracadabra is in there um mm-hmm. there's also uh, mr element dr other guy that's the same guy right uh, dr alchemy and Mr. Element. I thought you were going to see Dr. Octopus. And I was like, that's not right. <laughs> but that's not a person I'd yet. like to see Dr. Octopus in the Flash and the animated that, series. That, we'll, we'll save that pitch for DC once we get the chance. <laughs> Could they just call it The Flash? Because that's been a show name two other times. <laughs> I don't know if that would really work. Mm-hmm. Or they, maybe they just pull a Batman in the animated series and they don't have a title. It's just... You just see the flash and you know what it is. Or what if it's a flash animated series and it doesn't work on iPhones? <laughs> hey, woo. <laughs> uh, so then last question we got, this is from, I'm pretty sure it's pronounced new way. 
but I'm probably wrong again. And you, well, you didn't ask um, me to say it, so you're probably don't. Right. I will not. Uh, I loved what, when we were talking to Sam Liu the other day, and he mispronounced what word was that? It was a. Uh, um, oh yeah, no, but he he immediately like laughed at himself and said it yes, right. Yes, uh, I know, cre- but I was just creativity like, or something like that. I can't remember. I, yeah, in, in in my heart, I was like, yeah. <laughs> that's how you say it one. that's how you say it <laughs> okay uh you'll see that interview <clears throat> soon listeners so they say what dcau movie would you make while following these criteria two to three characters that did not exist during the original run of the dcau example jessica mm. cruz miss martian uh okay. a returning character with their voice actor example superman george newburn a character and location that looks different from when it appeared in the original run of the DCAU, example, Kilowog, <laughs> and a detail that makes it difficult to pin down when it happened in the timeline, example, 10 months. I think with Ooh. all of these criteria that they're laying out, I would make Justice League versus the Fatal Five. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, sorry, run through one more time. It's three okay, of yeah, was, that's three a lot characters. of stuff. Okay, two to three characters that did not exist during the original okay. run of the DCAU. One with a voice actor returning. Yes. One with like a new look for yeah. an old character. And one and a difficult and a diffi- something that makes it difficult to pin it during the time. Okay. Line. Like just a random thing to say. Okay. Um so I was my my mind was gravitating towards new characters like um Ryan Choi's Adam. That would be yeah, okay. one of my picks. Uh maybe Set it in like uh, Batman Beyond time or something, or somewhere in between. No, yeah, somewhere in between. But the returning, like the character that would make a weird, maybe like. <laughs> Have it be the really Adam, but question. he can look like Young Justice Adam on accident. Oh, we could do with the new Blue Beetle, too. We could do Jaime Reyes. <laughs> yeah, Blue Beetle. yeah. And then. um. Uh, yeah, a, a Choi Adam and Reyes Blue Beetle team. And then up. there's one more. We got, we got to have one more. Maybe like the new Firestorm too, Jason Rush. Although yeah, he sure. was like probably around the last season of JLU came out. We don't uh, know. Voice, voice <laughs> actor returns. Let's bring back Michael Rosenbaum as a Flash. Okay. I think he yeah, hasn't he had enough. Their, he can yeah. be their like mentor, but he's like yeah. in his like 40s now or whatever. Right. So he's like the old guy who's trying to be cool. Uh-huh. But you have all these young guys with <laughs> They're them. using all sorts of shui slang terms that he doesn't understand. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And then a detail for difficulty, uh, four years. Just, you know, <laughs> yeah, that's a long four time. Year, four years, four ago, years ago, when the, that thing happened, yeah, the plasma rifle. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, but that's that, not difficult. That we know exactly us what the movie is. So it's in yeah. 09, So this is a near archives of 09 movie. Uh, you know, what's the what's the wrong model thing? What, what um, who has the wrong model? So <laughs> it's it's gonna be. Superman in the black suit with the beard. <laughs> Just like, in the background. Whoopsie. <laughs> everybody knows when you put Superman in the black suit with the beard, it's something serious. <laughs> yeah. You know? Oh, black suit Superman. Oh, what's this going to be? <laughs> <laughs> Not what you expect. It'll Not be at all. It's going to be the movie with interesting Flash at all. Yeah. <laughs> and Joy Adam and Blue Beetle. and uh, The teaser trailer for Firestorm. this movie has just black suit Superman's eyes opening and and who are they fighting? Not... Ask me who they're fighting. But uh, who's the, who are they fighting? Maxwell Lord. <laughs> I don't <Okay>. know. <laughs> it just came to That's me. Such a build up for for nothing. <laughs> for nothing. <laughs> just a dude. Just a dude with a little telepathy. You do Maxi Zeus and Maxwell Lord. Team I'd up. I'd want them to. I'd want to redo the Jail International story arc with Manga Khan and okay. have that be. It's this alien overlord who comes to Earth to basically give it like a home makeover. And he's like okay. such a reality <laughs> TV host. It's really kind of cheesy and funny. And Batman can punch Guy Gardner in the face. And Maxwell Lord yeah. will sell out the world for okay. this guy. He'll be the one who'll be like, yeah, yep, here. Um, I'm your I'm your right-hand producer. Let me let me help you and sell Bernie out the world. And Bernie can run yeah, the show. Perfect. Yeah, perfect. Perfect. <laughs> well, thanks for listening, everybody. <laughs> this has been another episode of Twelfth Level Analytics, and that'll be uh, your next DTV movie once we pitch yeah, it to DC yeah. Universe. We just spoiled the Justice League reunion for you. Yeah. Sorry. we've been talking <laughs> oh, to God. a lot of Justice League vs. Fatal Five people lately, and they they pretty much told us that that's what's happening. So that's it. That's um, the next thing. <laughs> that it, wait for the news articles to come out of oh <laughs> exclusive. Okay, so <laughs> the podcast is out every other Monday. 
uh, on iTunes, on YouTube, and WatchtowerDatabase.com. Uh, you can stream it from all those places. We're on social media at DCAU Watchtower. Um, you can also email us, info at WatchtowerDatabase.com, or you can send a message in the Everyone's Trash channel on the, our Discord. Those are three different ways that you can get everyone's trash <laughs> messages to us for the podcast or just tell us anything tell us hey i liked that last video you did and we'll be like hey thank you an admin will respond to your message shortly as our um yeah you know auto response <laughs> and then i'll come on a couple hours later and i'll say thank you for realsies uh we got videos out on the channel sunday wednesday monday thursday sunday wednesday monday thursday until we change it again uh so subscribe <laughs> to the channel so know. you don't miss any of that uh patreon.com slash dcau watchtower if you want to throw us your coffee money like many people have done so far it's been very nice thank you if you i've had listening. to still buy my own coffee uh, yeah you can finally okay. buy coffee for yourself with the patreon money that's the whole I point i thought patreons were buying me coffee oh, i've been like no. where's my free coffee so okay. you've been just expecting coffee this whole yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Now, um, okay. We got uh, <laughs> Loot Crate affiliate code, which is uh, Loot10, L0, sorry, L O O 10. No, L O O T 10. Jesus, James. <laughs> the, <laughs> the, if you go to the link in the description of this, you can go buy a Loot Crate with that through that link. We get some money, I think. Uh, maybe you can use loot 10 to get no one's done it off. yeah i did maybe i that have. was a flawless read of the loot crate affiliate information it wasn't uh, but that's okay. oh sorry um we we got t-shirts and phone cases and stuff at teespring.com slash stores slash dcau watchtower um and i think that's it that's all the stuff i have to say Those so are the things. now we will stop the podcast so that we can record the part about game of thrones and put it in the middle of the podcast <laughs> And time is a lie. Time is irrelevant. <laughs> time a does not exist. Time Action. is a bat cat. Yes. I'm trying to You've tie it back into it our again, first Ted. joke. I always uh, perfect, try. <laughs> perfect bookend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no offense, but I really don't think you could follow the reasoning of a 12th level intellect such as my own. Guess not. The 12th Level Intellects podcast is hosted by the Watchtower Database. Visit watchtowerdatabase.com for more podcast episodes, videos, comics, artwork, and pretty much anything DC Animated Universe you can think of.